Hey, 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 listen. Don't take this for anything sweet, you understand? Because our goal is to win our league, correct? Because we already know who we want to see and who we want to see right here. I won't put it out here tonight, but we already know what the goal is, correct? Thank you for joining us again on Woodbridge Weekly. Coach, good week, another win. Before I get to the football thing, uh, I was riding in this morning, I had to, I gotta ask you something. I was listening to music on my way in. What's your go-to? Like, what, if, if, I had to, if I had to put you on the spot and say, you're Mount Rushmore of musicians, who do you like? Who do you want to listen to most? <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot. Wow, I mean, I'm an old school kind of guy, so. Um, I mean, I got I, I got very I got various of artists that I like like to listen to, but um, you know, for as far as just what what, what, what kind of gets me going, it's probably some Parliament Funkadelic, um, you know, some some just some old school Atomic Dog, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. That's that's me. All right, George Clinton, all, right. all the way. <laughs> I was listening to Billie Holiday on my way in. That's why I, that's why I started okay. thinking about it. Okay. I, I wanted to ask okay. you. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it, the tunes are loaded in the phone, so. <laughs> and it's, it's a million of them. Yeah. So I definitely I definitely love the music. All right, because you, you, off camera last week, you started, you started hitting a little bit of salt and pepper when we were downstairs. So yes, I had you did. You that's right. Yes, you did. <laughs> I got it on camera too, so I'll, I'll release that one day. When you make me mad, I'll put that out there. Uh oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Depend on, <laughs> depend on what cut it was. That's right. That's all. Well, look, we got uh, you had OP this week. Uh, thankfully, rain held off for you a little bit. There's been a lot of adjustments in the schedule around here the last couple of weeks. The weather's been crazy, yeah. but um, it's 35 nothing at it, and, and game called at that point. Um, Tell me about the game a little bit. It was a little sloppy play here and there. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, we, we made an agreement as a program that, you know, we try to set our standards up to just get into the tune-ups right away and just jump on top of things. But um, we kind of played a little bit of linger game. And, and the guys hear that from me all the time when we, you know, kind of get in games like we played. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's no knock on OP at all. It's, it's, it's just what we're concerned with in terms of the things that we want to go out and do. And, um, you know, we just want to be able to get into the game right away. But um, unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't spark until later on um, for us to get a, get a rhythm, yeah. which, which I spoke about last week. You know, when I talked about last year, we kind of had to get in a rhythm to get things going. And we slightly reverted back to that, which, which I don't want us to do, mm. you know, because we've kind of proved to ourselves that, you know, we're capable of, uh, you know, just jumping into things right away. Uh, I think kind of the, the momentum change just kind of came with, with uh, Pudgy's fumble. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he kind of took it real hard on himself. Um, you know, thinking you're clear and free. Right. You know, but as a back, you're always taught to ice that ball, seal that ball, hold that ball. And of course, in the DB's world of games, their, their job is on breakaways is to smack that ball first, yeah. make that tackle, you know, in collision. Uh, so he kind of beat himself up a little bit, and uh, we just kind of had to regroup him just to get everything going back, uh, getting going back in motion. But uh, it, in the end, it, it still worked in our favor. Yeah, you know, when the schedule changes like that, when you got to push games a little earlier, maybe move it to a Saturday, something like that. How do those? Is, is that you and the head coach talking? Is that the athletic directors getting together? How does that stuff come about? Well, pretty much. Pretty much every school controls their games okay. between their administration and their athletic director. Um, so it, it was it was their call for us to go at six o'clock. Right. Um, that does kind of change the the format of, for us, you know, because we try to be as detailed from after school, you know, with pregame meal, to, to to film to walk through, you know, to either packing up on the bus or playing at home. So we definitely had to modify our, our schedule. To, to accommodate us, to, to help us prepare, mm. you know, and get tuned up for the game. All right. Now, it's supposed to be more weather this coming week. Um, so is that, and the game's gonna be here. So is that, is that things you'd be looking at all through the week? You'd be trying to adjust that stuff earlier in the week or you have to wait till kind of the last minute to get that stuff done? Well, 
for us, we're going to try to get engaged early. Our athletic trainer, uh, Kara Cheatham, she does a fantastic job of tracking the weather, uh, making the calls and things like that, you know, in terms of us trying to make the right decisions, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not to, to play a game or to host a practice and that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. I mean, we Thursday morning, 4.30 a.m. was our first time we could get outside in two weeks. Um, and we kind of felt our lingers were coming from that that, yeah. that issue as well. You know, none of my coaches have had any individual time, you know, pretty much practicing inside. You know, we, we're doing more group work mm. and walkthrough than anything, you know, just because the space is limited. Yeah. And then, you know, you got to support the other athletic programs that, that can't go outside and do the things either. Um, so it, it takes it takes a toll on us, and we kind of felt this showing in the game as well. So for this week, you know, we're just going to play it by ear. You know, we'll, we'll have our normal Monday routine tomorrow, and then we're just hoping, you know, somehow, somewhere we can get outside. Yeah. All right, so your test coming up this week, Battlefield. It's a big game. I think they've had, they've had record people in the program this year. Um, old coach came back last year, took back over the program, and really – got it going in the right direction um what's it what's that game like for you what's that what's that little you know there's a little there's two good teams in prince william county going at it yeah i mean it's, it's definitely a big game for us um coach cox i, I know well you know he and i are, we're good friends we've been coaching for a very long time here you know even in fairfax and <clears throat> and in prince william county um and like like i like i stated last week too we're gonna treat everybody like they're a championship team yeah um and we're, we're going to prepare for them. Uh, my defensive coordinator, Endo Cooper, is definitely up for the challenge. Uh, you know, we, 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 we call our defensive playbook the cookbook. Yeah. You know, because those guys create recipes each and every weekend, you know, breaking down opponents and putting game plans together for us to be successful. Right now, at the start of the season, we got two donuts on the board, um, which, which has become contagious. Right. So our guys right now, you know they 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 don't want to they don't want any points on the board. Yeah. So that's the theme going in this week, and um, we're just gonna put the best game plan together defensively to uh, deal with their offense. I mean they're very disciplined. Yeah. You know Coach Cox is he's a, he's a hard nosed coach runs a good offensive system. Um, they're very detailed in it, and um, in some aspects it's tough to defend. Mm -hmm. But uh, we we're gonna put the plans together defensively to. Uh, to be prepared. Right. So, it, as far as as far as scheme goes, what kind of challenges does Battlefield present on the field? I mean, you've had a chance to look at them on film. You, Cox has a lot of film out there from what he's done at Battlefield in the, in the past. But what have you seen from them? What do you guys need to prepare for? Well, I mean, one thing about Coach Cox, he, he, you know, his, his kind of, you know, his thing for years is he's not going to change what he does. You just going to have to stop it. Right. And they don't do anything fancy. They run a pro-style offense uh, with tight ends, our formation, smash mouth football, old school football. They're going to line up and they're going to do what they do. And uh, their, their, their goal for everybody else is you just need to stop what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so just scheme-wise for us, we, you know, we're, we're, we're already multiple. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we're just going to put our tools together. Just go out and play some good football. All right. Well, look, going back a little bit last week, you know, Battlefield's another team. You can't make a lot of mistakes against them. They'll make no. you pay for mistakes. Right. Um, Back to the, the Osborne Park game. You guys had some mistakes in there? Yes. You weren't the only coach heated on the side. A lot of, a lot of the guys are getting, getting yeah. heated on the guys. Yeah. Just, like I said, just a little bit of – needed to clean some things up in, during the game. Then. Yeah. No, it, I mean, it got <laughs> – it, it got extremely heated for our offensive coordinator. That, yeah. You know, he made a guest appearance on the sideline, <laughs> which uh, he normally does not do. But – he just looked at me and says, there's some things I got to get fixed here, coach, and uh, you know, I need to be down here for the moment. Mm. So, you know, it did make a difference. Um, you know, the pace did kind of change for us a little bit. And, um, you know, we picked it up. I mean, Taylor Harris needed what, what, what he went through last week for us. 
because um, it, it, you know, with him being a guy on the defensive side of the ball, and we've utilized the offense in the past, mm -hmm. um, it was just kind of good for him to to break out a little bit and you know just just show his speed and you know the the way he's developed, you know, being a being a multi side player, you know, because we now, I mean. If, if, if everybody's noticed, you know, number six ain't on one side of the ball. He's right. in the middle of the field, and uh, he's he's bringing he's bringing it, being in the middle of the field. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we we did kind of figure out that he can run straight ahead. So, <laughs> you know, that that turned out to be something special. Yeah, I remember the week before, called a timeout right when he got the ball, right before he got the ball, and I think he saw a hole that he had. He got a little mad. <laughs> Called that timeout yeah. right then. Yeah, he, he 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 was a little upset, but I told him, you know, we we got to coach the game and yeah. make those necessary adjustments. But um, he, he's a he, special yeah, player, though. He, he he is a very special player. Yeah. East Carolina commit. You know, it's, it's it's good for their program, and you know, he's excited about them. So we we just kind of happy for him. They you know he had a good game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he got a lot more of them in his future. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Before we get to this, uniforms. Do you ever get input from the players on what kind of uniforms they want moving forward, or you, or is that something that you keep that you keep and you kind of surprise them with? Well, actually, this year when it came to the uniform protocol, I lost my job, so I had nothing to do with <laughs> oh, the yeah. uniforms, and ne neither did the players. Yeah. Um, our offense coordinator took over that task. For, for this program and created the new uniforms for us. I, I did get one piece of the vision, okay. and, and that was this. Um, this this right here was, was my vision. Um, in terms of us just, you know, trying to stick with the safety protocol. Mm -hmm. not, not necessarily the luxury, yeah. you know, the, the, this particular item is needed for everybody. Right. Um, you can't put a price tag on safety. No. Nope. Especially with the you know, the way the athlete is today, bigger, stronger, and faster. Um, the concerns of concussion, uh, concussions, and, and, and just, you know, overall athlete's health yeah. um, when it comes to brain and brain injuries. Uh, to the point now where every year everybody has to have concussion certification. Mm -hmm. uh, even the players, even the coaches. Um, but in creating this vision, we kind of wanted to do something different. Um, you know, with the with the white look, the gloss, the kids call it ice. It's yeah. like coach, that's icy, coach, that's icy. <laughs> um, and then, you know, this this week's game is is a dedication from for our program to uh, the 9/11 victims of Prince William County, mm -hmm. their families, um, to the United States military. It's a military appreciation night as well, and that's kind of a big deal for our school. Our school calls it the America Out, where our students our student section. Our student body will will dress in red, white, and blue. Um, so upon putting this creation together with with these 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 new safety tools right here, um, our lacrosse coach from last year, Coach Cody, had took our logo mm -hmm. and created it into these stars and stripes. And when I saw it, I fell in love with it. Yeah. So, you know, and us trying to you know really figure out how we wanted to kind of convert our colors, you know, which our colors are green, yellow, gold, and white. We decided to go with the, it's called the white extreme look, mm -hmm. and then we just came up, uh, just came up with this idea to red stripe the helmet, and uh, put this 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 American flag V on here for a dedication to America out. Uh, and the kids love it. Yeah, you know it's it's gonna be it's gonna be nice, seeing all those guys dressed out, decked out in this new helmet, this new gear, but yet in support of you know the military. Uh, the things that they do for our country, and, and it's just a little something. You know, if you watch the Northwestern game yesterday, mm -hmm. they they actually kind of rehabbed me trying to look at my vision uniform wise, but I I don't ha I don't have that call, so I, I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't say hey let's wear let's wear gray, yeah. you know white bottoms and 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 these icy looks the kids call it, you know to uh, support America and, and our venue within the game. So I really don't know what we're wearing mm -hmm. as far as uniform wise. I guess I'll find out. Sometime this week, from from the guy that controls the uniforms now. Well, you're gonna be, you're, the surprise will be for you, just like it is for everybody yes, else. Yes, right? yes, it will be. But uh, the kids are excited about it. You know, they <clears throat> they they've kind of helped give back towards it too with their fundraising and things like that. You know, to be able to help our administration out to take care of these important things that we need. Yeah.
Well, I'll tell you what, if you, whatever combination of your uniforms that, you, that you're going to wear, I might have a play of eligibility left. Okay. I might have okay. one play. I ain't okay. going to look very good in the uniform, okay. but I'll feel good in it. Okay. At what position? Well, I, I mean, if, playing behind your offensive line, I only want to play quarterback one time. That's oh, okay. All. So you want to sit there and tell yourself one play? I didn't say that. We can, we can, we can run, a, we can run a, a wildcat formation. Okay. Okay. I, ain't gonna, yeah, I can't throw very deep, but I'll get it somewhere. All right. But can you run it? Because he'll block for you. No, we, I'm not, I'm not going to let him do that. No, I don't want him blocking. No. No, I think it's un- I think it's unfair enough that Joe got Sam on the kickoff coming down there about trying to hit somebody. It. How about that, right? That's not fair at all. Is no, it? no, no. That's yeah, he does a good job though. The first time I saw it, I cringed. Not not for him. I cringed for the other guys coming down the, the, that were trying to catch the ball coming down the field. Was that with him kicking? Or that just was him the problem. In the lineup? That was the problem. He blasted somebody on his. I've never seen a kicker blast somebody like that on the yeah, side. That actually happened right in front of me. And I was pretty. <laughs> I was pretty impressed. But um, I'm just glad I did not get in the way. I was going to say, you, you better be ready to move. Yeah, uh, yeah. Coach has got to stay on guard now. <laughs> That's right. I'm a, I don't want to get you in any trouble. But I know I've seen some things over the last couple of years uh, with referees, and there's been a shortage of referees. So I think we're, we're having some trouble um, getting real good referees like we used to have. And, you know, even with more schools and everything, it's tougher. But... Um, I've noticed that it looks like there's some that some people get some bad calls because of who they are rather than what's going on on the field. What is your take on referees and how the how it's going over the? I mean, you've been around well, for a long time. You've seen a lot of football in this area. I mean, I mean, I have I have seen a difference. Um, it doesn't phase me as much as it does my staff. Okay. When it seems like things just are not in our favor. Mm-hmm from the officials. I do have a policy to my coaches that nobody talks to the officials but me and the players, unless it's the captains. Mm -hmm. Um, I've just kind of over the years, I've just kind of learned to just deal with it. Um, But what I would like to see um, is a collaboration clinic of the high school head coaches and the officials to just be able to come together in some t- type of clinic or workshop. Um, Cause I, I think, I, I just think, and um, I just wanna make sure I say this correctly. I, I just think it could just be some better communication right. when, when head coaches want answers and have questions during the game. Um, there seems to be kind of maybe like an authoritative, authoritative, just in terms of just trying to maybe express yourself a little bit that portion of it, it kind of disappoints me a little bit because it's just not easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know the game has got to go on and continue, and you know, there's not a lot of time for for explanations. But you know, you get some who do, you right. know, come and give it to you, and then you get some that don't, and that's just kind of where I think the inconsistencies come from. Um, but like I said, I just, you know, and I mentioned that to somebody last week that, you know, I just wish that there could be some kind of collaboration. You know, in a, in a very positive way for, you know, if the head officials say, hey, you know, let's collaborate with the head coaches and let's right. get together and let's get in an open forum and let's let's share with them how we train, mm-hmm. you know, to for us to be able to do what we do for them. Uh, I, I know they got a tough job. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy job. You know, there's there's a lot of evaluating that goes on with those guys to be able to call a, a, a right game. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think right now the biggest, <laughs> one of the biggest discrepancies that happens on the fields is, the wide receiver DB play. Yes. You know, I think uh, there's just just a lot of kind of misunderstanding for us, you know, just in terms of how some of the calls are made. Mm-hmm. You know, because in the game of football, you know, the DBs, they, you know, they do have rights to access the ball, you know, without getting certain calls and things like that. But I, I support those guys that, like I said, they got a tough job to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully, you know, something in the future will allow some collaboration you know, that way it, it can be, a, you know, a hand-in-hand type of situation. Not looking for any favors because, right, right. you know, you win the game based on your merit and the things that you do on the field. But sometimes, I mean, I feel I just got to outscore people right away because <laughs> I just don't know what's next to come. Right. But I, I respect them and, <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it's, they got a tough job. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to knock any of the reps or anything like that, but I, yeah, I think, um, there, like you said, there does need to be better communication. And um, it's good for the sport, it's good for everybody. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. And it, it's, it's a tough job, I ain't gonna lie. I don't wanna do it, that's for sure. Right, I don't wanna do it either. And that's why I've just kind of learned to just, you know, I, you just kind of phase to where, you know, if, it, if it's called and that's what he saw, I just kind of just leave it alone. Yeah. And I, and I, but I'm, you know, on the mic, you know, encouraging my D coordinator, just don't jump out your seat. Just, <laughs> just relax, you know, or my office coordinator, or all my staff. I'm like, guys, just get the next play ready. Let's, yeah. let's go. You know, our, our goal is to not give up points that, that game. Let's just, we ain't giving up no points. You know, let's deal with the elements. We had some critical elements in last week's game, yep. you know, to where there were multiple calls, multiple calls, multiple calls, unless you need to know, you know, OP's on the 15-yard line. Yeah. But we don't we don't give up a score. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's a bonus for our defense, and that's a bonus for our kids overcoming, you know, those type of situations. Yeah. You know, it's like kind of like DB play. You know, DB's got to have short-term memory. You know, you make a mistake, you get a call, you get a fight, you got to let it go. Got to get ready for the next play. Yeah. Um, so I, they, they got a tough job. No, absolutely. Um, you got a tough job coming up this week with Battlefield. Uh, can't wait to see that game. I know the stands are going to be packed. You, yeah, might, you, know, you might need to bring in more bleachers for that game. We, we might. I mean, our, our, our student section for the last two, two road games, they, they have been there with us in rare form. And it, it hasn't been everybody, but it's, it's been enough to, to get our boys rolling yeah. and, and to get their mentality straight for football. You know, and then I, I noticed last week as I was walking away, they were saying, we love Coach G. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I, I love you guys too. You know, they're, 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 they're part of the team. Yeah. You know, they're part of what we do here. And we look for them every game, SALC. And then we got a new student organization this year called SALT. Um, I want to say a student athletic leadership team class. It's, it's a class. Mm -hmm. and it's got more of the student athletes in it now. You know, and, and they're bringing new ideas. Um, to the activity of sports, mm -hmm. you know, aspect along with SALC here at Woodbridge, which is a, a good situation. We've got a couple football players that are in that new salt class, and uh, those guys are loving it. Uh, Mr. Bayola, uh, Ms. Bristow, and Mr. Jack, th th those are our team leaders for those classes. You know, those, those folks are doing an amazing job here, you know, with those, those group of students to, to promote. I mean, they've already got a calendar out um, we built different. Yeah. It's got all the color-coded schemes for every game, and they did send me an, an approval for me to approve it, but we got to flip one game. I won't say it on the air right all now, right. but we got to flip a color for a game that we're going to play. Um, and I got to just get with them so we can do that, but it's a surprise for a team that's going to come here and visit us. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's going to be a good situation. But, you know, we're taking it one game at a time. Um, everybody's doing their homework right now. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to put the pieces together to kind of continue what we got going on. Right. Had well, some good visits this weekend. Went to a couple colleges this weekend. Yeah. Three different groups on the road. Um, some of the guys went to West Virginia. Some of the guys were at Old Dominion. And uh, some of the guys were up at Kent State. Um, and that's, that's, you know, you already know, it's, this is a ministry for me. It's like a passion. Mm -hmm. Anything I can do to help these young men have a good future and get an education is what we're going to do. But it was a good weekend. It's beautiful. That's why we're here talking to you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Well, good luck this week. Appreciate we'll it. We'll be here. Okay. And, uh, we'll talk about it next week. Looking forward. All right. All right, now. Thank you.